America could have beat COVID-19, but racism got in the way. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. It just came out yesterday, and we, uh, many of us just heard the, the audio tapes for the first time this morning or last night of Bob Woodward back in April. Now, just, you know, put this timeline in your head. You'll recall it was, it was November that the U.S. government learned that there was a contagious disease running around in China and notified Israel and some of our other allies. It was December that we figured out pretty much what it was. It was January that the Chinese government publicly announced what was going on and published the genome of the virus so that by the end of January, the World Health Organization had come up with a test for it, which they had distributed to over 60 countries. Trump said we wouldn't take it because that's going to those asshole countries and we don't want it. Um, we'll, develop, we'll develop our own. We'll, we'll figure out some way for some Trump buddy to make a fortune on this. And, and then on March 11th, that was when Donald Trump declared uh, a lockdown, basically, or a, you know, kind of shut down the economy. And then something happened. And as I said, it was April 18th that Bob Woodward sat down with Jared Kushner and said, what's going on with this virus? And Jared Kushner said, we have, we being the Trump administration, we have taken the power back from the doctors. That's not the verbatim quote, um, but you know, words to that effect. We're running this show now, not the doctors. So what was happening right around April 18th? Well, as I mentioned, on March 11th, Trump had shut the country down. The economy had crashed. People were laid off. But, you know, saving lives was the number one consideration. I mean, Trump was putting doctors on TV every day. He was holding these meetings. The media was freaking out. We were watching refrigerated trucks carrying bodies away from New York hospitals. Doctors and nurses were our new national heroes. And then came April 7th. On April 7th, the New York Times ran a front page story with the headline, Black Americans Face Alarming Rates of Coronavirus Infection in Some States. And across the American media landscape, all, you know, similar headlines were popping up in every newspaper. The Washington Post did a story like this, CNN, uh, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, Evening News, all of them, everybody. April 7th, everybody led with this story. America, African Americans are disproportionately getting and dying from the coronavirus. And the white American conservative infrastructure sat up like Scooby-Doo and went, Whoa? you know, what the hell? It, you know, it was like, whoa. Rush Limbaugh went on the air and said, with the coronavirus, I have been waiting for the racial component. The coronavirus now hits African Americans harder, harder than illegal aliens, harder than women. It hits African Americans harder than anybody. Disproportionate representation. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't take a medical savant. You don't have to be a doctor to figure out that that would be the case because African-Americans die at disproportionately higher rates from everything, from heart disease to strokes to cancer to childbirth in America. It's a symptom of a racially rigged economy and healthcare system that only responds to money, which America has conspired to keep from African-Americans for more than 400 years. Of course they're going to die more frequently from the coronavirus. But the New York Times and the Washington Post simultaneously publishing these front page stories, both on April 7th, echoed across the right wing infrastructure, of the media landscape, like a 4th of July fireworks display. Tucker Carlson went on the air. And he had been taking the, the virus seriously. He was about the only Fox primetime host who had. And he said, you know, right after this report, well, we can begin to consider how to improve the lives of the rest, the countless Americans who've been grievously hurt by this, by our response to this. How do we get 17 million of our most vulnerable citizens back to work? That's our task. White people were out of work and black people were most of the casualties outside of the extremely elderly. And those white people needed their jobs back. Britt Hume went on Carlson's show as the news guy. And he said, well, the disease turns out not to be quite as dangerous as we thought. Right. Even Fox News viewers can hear dog whistles like that. More than 12,000 Americans had died from the coronavirus as of April 7th. But most of the non-elderly victims were black. And suddenly, everything was different. It took less than a week for Trump to get the memo. You know, on April 12th, he retweeted a call for Dr. Anthony Fauci to be fired. 
and in another tweet said that he had the sole authority to open the United States back up and would roll out a plan to do that shortly. That was April 12th. Keep in mind, April 18th was when Bob Woodward recorded this conversation with Jared Kushner. On April 13th, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce published a policy paper titled Implementing a National Return to Work. On April 14th, Freedom Works, the group that brought us the Tea Party, um, published an op-ed on their website calling for an economic recovery program and a new law to shield businesses from lawsuits. Three days after that, Freedom Works and the House Freedom Caucus issued a joint statement declaring, it's time to reopen the economy. They published, the Freedom Works published their Reopen America Planning Guide, um, saying to show up in person at your state capitol and governor's mansion uh, with your homemade signs. Uh, you know, and this led to you know these these rallies all over the country probably the one that got the most attention was the one in michigan where they were you know threatening gretchen whitmer so that's what was going on april 18th let's put this in context you're listening to the tom hartman program call 202-808-9925 i mean the conservative